Good evening, and welcome to Monkeys with Fire. So tonight you're joining me on another painting workshop with Pascal. He shall be painting the miniature Sapphire from r &E Studio, demonstrating the technique of applying textures to materials, to cloth. All right then, Pascal, so the, the, the show is yours. Well, great. Uh, well, hello everybody, and uh, class is in, I guess. Um, I'm going to do something um, uh, I'm not uh, have been doing uh, a lot lately, uh, so I'm hoping I'm going to get it right, but I think I can. Because what I'm going to show you is actually not very difficult. It's just a hell of a lot of work, right? So I'm going to show you how to uh, get some texture on your surfaces. Uh, things like uh, uh, what I'm doing tonight is the threads. I'm going to show it uh, your your uh, cloth like it has a thread count, you know, something like that. Uh, I'm going to show you that, but I'm going to do some theory first on uh, how I'm going to do that and uh, what else you could also do in doing textures. And as always, if you've got any questions, please do not hesitate to uh, put them in, in the chat and uh, uh, I'll be happy to, to answer anything, right? Um, so here's my palette. This is the uh, first time actually for me that I'm being able to show my palette as well uh, while, while painting. And I've got some range of colors uh, ahead of me. Um, if you've seen my uh, Instagram account and my Facebook, you've already seen how far I got with the model. And then you can see uh, what the base color is going to be for my um, for my dress, which is something in between these two colors over here. This is a blue and a green. Uh, in particular, uh, this is uh, Scale 75 Fantasy Games. Uh, I'm, I don't even know how to pronounce it, but it's a, some kind of turquoise. There we go. And the green is uh, Surfer Orc Flesh. All right, I'm going to mix those two uh, up uh, in a bit, uh, trying to get the almost the same base color as I got on the model. Uh, to get some highlights, I've got a really bright green here, because I'm going to do some funky things with colors uh, tonight. This is Scale 75 uh, Toxic Waste Green. Really bright yellowish green, and I really like the yellow in this, so I'm going to use that. To further up the highlights, I've got Pure White which is the white from a scale model. And then I'm going to go to the darker colors. This is, which is pretty hard to see, I guess, but this is actually purple, uh, sunset purple. It's really bright uh, compared to the blue. Uh, look at that. There's a lot of red in here. That's actually what I want. And then I've got uh, just dead black from uh, flat black, actually from scale 75 and i deliberately chose to do all scale 75 uh, colors for this because um when i'm doing cloth i really like the matte uh, matte after effect from these colors uh, when i'm doing cloth so um next to these colors uh, uh, usually i'm gonna paint with uh, this one this is my number two uh, winter newton uh, which has a really sharp tip, uh, but tonight I really need to do some fine, fine uh, work. So I've got some, um, these are zeros and uh, two double zeros uh, from different brands. Uh, actually, as long as the tip is okay, the brand doesn't, uh, doesn't mean that much to me. Uh, so I'm going to use these a lot today, right? Okay, let's do some theory. So I've got prepared a little uh, bit of plastic art here, and uh, you can already see I've done a bit of uh, tryout here. And this is actually what I'm going to try to achieve. Right? This is the actually the end result of what I'm going to do on the uh, uh, on the dress. And I, uh, if you look closely, and you can see it right away, the only thing I'm doing is making really tiny lines, and that's the whole idea. This texture is based around the threads, and threads are really small lines, so this is it. And I'm going to do this back and forth in, in different colors, so that colors overlap each other. Uh, so in certain areas, you can see lighter colors coming through through the darker colors, and uh, vice versa. And this is what makes the uh, texture really pop up. 
and a real cool one is is if you want to do something like um, uh, velvet or something, you know, a, a velvety texture. The, what, the thing you want to do is stippling. All right, I've got a base color in here. This is actually not exactly the same base color as uh, on the dress, but it's going to do fine. I'm going to show you just a little bit of what I'm going to do. So I'm going to start off with some darker tone of this. And I'm going to make sure the paint is a bit thin. A bit, a bit thinner than usual. Because I really like the almost wash-like effect that it's going to have. But I'm going to put a really tiny dot. And if I'm doing it good, that dot is going to be expanding a little bit. You're hardly going to see it, but there it is. So I'm going to do dot, 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 dot. You know how I like my dots. And the difficult part about this is, uh, you know, usually uh, you see me paint one color and then I'm going to go to the next stage and then I'm going to go to the next stage. Uh, in this way, you often go go back a bit, then you go forward a bit, uh, go back to this color, then I'm going to that color, then going darker, then I'm going lighter a bit again. I'm going to be more, much more fluid with, uh, with all my colors. And the tinier you can make these dots, the more, um, the more feel you're going to give to the velvet color. Or to the velvet texture, I should say. gonna do this really quick right because you're all waiting to see the uh, the model well you've been doing some really awesome work on it over the uh, last couple of weeks it's yeah. been uh, the project of the Simeon Collective to be painting up miniatures from r &E Studio so each artist has been working on a different miniature bringing their unique style to each one and actually I'm, I'm doing this so so quick right now um i'm even not letting letting the the colors dry which i should do actually but uh but it's just to give you an idea of, of what's going on as i'm looking at the camera i'm not sure if you're even gonna see it right there you go All right and you can take this as far as you like but actually, this is the whole thing, putting in dots, dots, dots. And uh, the thing is, the lighter you go, you're going to be much more visible with your dots. So if you're going to be much more focused, then it's going to be with the lighter colors. Because they're going to show up much, much more as dots and less as texture. So when you're going to go to the darker side, and it's not so, uh, not so difficult. You can even cheat in by just, just blending it in. A bit so yeah so basically that's the idea right yeah the same yeah. thing is gonna go uh, with the with the stripes here uh, and I've used different colors here than I've got on my palette so it's gonna be a bit different look than you've seen here uh, much more greens in here and much more purples in there but uh, the idea is exactly the same but I'm gonna do stripes I'm gonna do it on a cool model so um, why don't I let you uh, wait any longer and uh, let's go over to the model. Um, the base color here is um, pretty even. Not completely even, but it's even enough. It's just one flat base color. All right. So okay. just before you get started, how have you found uh, painting the, the this particular mini? Oh, awesome. Um, like it. The very first moment when I saw the um, actually the 3D render, I uh, immediately envisioned her as a uh, dark skinned girl instead of a, a, a what's it called Caucasian uh, woman, and um, and it, that's always fun to to step really out of bounds and do something different with uh, especially with skin. So I did that, and it turned out amazing. Some people said, well, she's looking like uh, like an Egyptian, or she's more like an Indian. I think, well, who cares? It's it's something different than Caucasian, which is awesome. And in this color scheme, it, it's really working out really well. 
Um, the model itself is, is sculpted amazing. It's uh, it was really crisp. Hardly needed any um, any cleaning. Uh, the arms were detached, so I had to attach those, and that was it. Actually, oh no, exactly these these arm rings here are uh, separate pieces as well. Right. Which were a challenge to paint them right. Okay, I cannot hold them like this and then paint them, so I had to uh, mount them actually on a spare uh, a brush, put them on here, and then I painted them. Right. Which was... And I, so, I, I, I love the, the blue and the gold. I mean, it just works so, so it's well. Cool. It's really cool. So, uh, and then, yeah, uh, something like these, like stockings, it's, those, those are always fun to do. Um, but I've never done them with uh, dark skin. So that was uh, was really cool to to see how that worked out. Um, let me see if I got something like the correct. <laughs> and Ado's agreeing that stockings are always fun <laughs> <laughs> in real life. Let me see. Is this a good color? Yeah, good enough, right? Okay, I'm going to start off with um, uh, with my darker colors first. Uh, Although I'm going back and forth, back and forth with uh, various stuff. And uh, this is still my number one method to go to shades first. Because those are going to define the volumes. And as you can see, I hope you can see in my palette. No, you cannot. Um, this is going to be pretty um, purple. This is a hard place to get to. I can I can easily cheat here a bit. This is going to be super dark later on. So for now, this will do. And then I'm going to go this. Do you remember my uh, classes on um, classes, class on spheres? Still going to uh, adhere to that. So this is why I'm going to start my shades already over here. Because well, this is the dark side. Already, is this is this is starting to get some volumes already. The thing is, that you can do this very sketchy at first as well. Um, put in much darker tones in first, really defining where the darkest shade should be, where the brightest highlights could be, and then work in the middle tones afterwards. Uh, blending it in much easier. This is, uh, I think, Ado would like this much more, like a sketching way. Before I started to do this, uh, start to think about this this class and this model, I really was wondering if I should even do this on uh, on this tiny model because it's it's 28 millimeters, and scale wise, the smaller you're gonna get, the less you're gonna see about uh, these kinds of textures. So would it be feasible, would it be logical to see that texture in this model? Then I thought, well, it's going to be cool anyway. <laughs> right, and that's what it's all about, making it awesome. This bit here, I'm not sure what, uh, what this is about actually. I'm going to do that later when I figure it out. I first saw that uh, this is a, a hole cut into the dress where you can see your butt. But actually, <laughs> <laughs> me, right? Uh, but actually, it's it's uh, located on top of the dress, so uh, it's not a not like a. It's it, it's cut. it's sort of like the the tails of um, her tunic top part, isn't it? Think so. Like the back, like, back of the waistcoat type thing. Yeah. <laughs> Butthole, right? But, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yes, that would be rather unfortunate, wouldn't it? <laughs> All right. Okay. I'm going to go some uh, a lot of darker. Um, just mixing up black with just purple which is near black, but do a bit more purple. 
but as you can see I'm not adding any um, basic colors in anymore because I really want to have that purple shine out this is a really tough spot like I keep saying with the darker colors you can cheat a little more uh, a bit more no need to really get that texture in in the in the most dark parts it's also a really good exercise to um to ex to to train your fine lines if this is the way you want to train it <laughs> So you can see that while I'm I'm, I'm just going back with uh, my base color and um, feathering out these these um, uh, edges, and while there's still I hope you can see that still while there's still some texture in there, it's gonna be smoothened out a bit more, so it's not painted on, but you're gonna see those yeah um, nice transitions still having texture in there. I'm going to go with a first highlight color now. Which I'm adding the green. I'm going to put it there. This is a nice spot. Put in a tiny bit of white in there just to give it, give it a bit more coverage. Uh, Going even lighter. Oh, there we go. And um, while I'm doing this, I'm also trying to, um, you know, approach the the fabric like a, like a non-metallic way, uh, like it's gonna got a certain sh uh, sheen on it uh like like um what's it called uh, like like silk yeah that's gonna reflect a whole different way than just flat uh flat fab fabrics so um Now you can get. Now you're able to see those stripes really good, right? I like this this bit here. Um, it's like it's going to be. It's, it's a bit wavy over here. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, enhancing the feel of uh, it being flowing fabrics. You're noticing how long I'm already working on just this part. The thing is, the more work you're going to put in, the better it's going to be. I, I, I love the sort of sheen effect that you've, uh, you're building up there. It looks great. That's the idea. Um, and uh, this works really well because there's really bright uh, near whites here yeah. and almost immediately going dark here. You see? Yeah, yeah, no, that's great. Because of that contrast, it's gonna, gonna pop up. I'm actually using a pure um, white right now because this is the uh, Vallejo, sorry, the uh, Skill 75 one. Um, it's always going to be a bit duller uh, than the purest white you're going to get. I'm going to show you that in a minute. Um, there we 
go. There we go. That, See how that works? Yeah, that looks great. It's shiny. And it's just this part. <laughs> There's also this um, this way of doing this is putting on those bright colors immediately uh, uh, very stark in to have them blend out uh, later on, but just to see if you've got the the uh, the angles of the light right. You know, did, did I put the bright colors on the good, right spots? Just to see uh, as a sketch, uh, did I do it right? The fun thing is I'm. Um, I'm, I'm using the light of my lamp a lot on this model to see where I should put my uh, brightest uh, um, shines in. I'm seeing this line over here. Not sure, yeah, you're seeing it too. So that's actually what I'm gonna gonna paint in. This one. There. Gonna make it a big wider than it needs to be in this color so that I've got room to um, uh, blend it in with my basics that's it there you go guys so just um, a quick uh, recap of what I did is uh, just putting in a lot of stripes, uh, which is going to make the uh, the texture in there. It's just a lot of work. So put in those hours, put in those fine lines, get a good equipment, good uh, tips, etc. And uh, yeah, well, have fun. Make sure to follow me to see the uh, the end results of this um of tonight's uh, uh, version and the entire end, end result that's going to be uh, later on awesome okay so thank you so much pascal hope you enjoyed it yep yeah, hopefully we'll, we'll see you tomorrow evening you too guys cheers bye for and now bye -bye. and there we go then so thank you so much once more to pascal for a great workshop showing us how to do textures on cloth. Uh, Arany Studios Sapphire is looking amazing. Can't wait to see what the finished miniature will look like. All right then, everybody. Thank you so much. Look forward to seeing you tomorrow evening. But until then, goodbye for now. <laughs>